we're going to get into a discussion about the growing facet of the Compass Alliance um, and their focus to helping the first community enjoy their experience at events um, with a focus on mental health and providing a safe, quiet place for FRC participants at over 30% of all official events this past season, 2019, including both championships. Um, there's a good chance that you or someone you know benefited from the efforts of this group this year. So kudos to everybody involved with that. So to get started on this, um, we're going to kind of look at chat first to see if anybody has kind of heard of Here For You in Quiet Rooms. And while we're waiting for some responses from people, um, Deanna and Hallie and Maddie, can you guys talk to us about what Here For You is and what the quiet rooms were and what your experience was like being a part of making those happen? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Here For You is basically, you know, this program that's part of the Compass Alliance that's aimed at providing these quiet, safe spaces like Christine was talking about at first events. Um, I'm sure as many people know, um, first events are crazy. You're typically running low on sleep. It's They can be really stressful, right, for anybody, for students and adults. So a quiet room is a really important space for people to have to kind of bring their mind back to the present, um, recharge a little bit, and get back into the competition events. So do you ladies want to talk about kind of like how we set them up at some of the events that we helped out at? Helped out at? <laughs> So what we would do is usually we would uh, co contact the administra administrators of an event and find a, a, a place, a room that is somewhat near the competition but very quiet. Um, and we have a whole portable set. We're actually in part of it right now. <laughs> it has everything from Play-Doh to yoga mats and so much more. Uh, we also made sure every team, oh yeah, there's the Play-Doh. Play <laughs> we made sure every team knew about said quiet rooms um, and and we would have people many of which were from our team staff it at all times mm -hmm. um, it was it was really an amazing and important resource I know I used it quite a few times mm -hmm. yeah me too for sure yeah mm -hmm. and we have PJ the ref who's from Michigan he said I know a few district events in FIM had them I'm not sure which ones off the top of my head I know 503 and others are trying to get them at all events here so Tyler just brought up a cool um, link on the official FIRST website because FIRST definitely backed this um, initiative really, really well and had it at both champs. So Sarah, can you talk a little bit about how our part, the partnership with headquarters kind of helped provide these rooms at, you know, more than just individual regionals or district events? Um, I know they were at both championships this year. For sure. I think, you know, having the partnership with FIRST has really helped the Compass Alliance go from just a group of us having some fun, trying to make a difference in the community and really get more actual involvement and seeing headquarters come on board with publishing a lot of the resources, some of the pathways, which I know we're going to discuss here in a little bit, as well as the quiet rooms has been fantastic, both because we saw more events do it this year with 30% of official first events having it, as well as having it at championship. You know, as an international team who has to travel so far to get there on 31-32, by the time you get there the kids are so tired and just even the ones who don't necessarily have mental health concerns they just need a place to go and have some quiet time and some downtime because they're up half the night because they're in the wrong time zone in their head <laughs> um so i think it's really important not just for the way we traditionally think about it but also for you know, international teams and all those situations. I know they were incredibly well received and got really great feedback from the entire community that went there, which was amazing. Yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned that because I know a lot of the times as like first participants, we often forget, you know, the, the international perspective or just, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's not even, you know, the international teams that are making these crazy, crazy treks to get to an event. And then, you know, once you're there, it's just absolutely nonstop. Um, so right now, Tyler is bringing up a video that um, a group called First for All did. Uh, they did a cool video on like how to get to the quiet room at Houston Champs, which I personally was not at. So it was interesting to see the venue and they did like a brief uh, overview of what it was. So I know that, um, Sarah, you had mentioned kind of the partnership with First Headquarters. Um, I was lucky enough to do a presentation at the Partners Conference I think it was in like June or something um, about quiet rooms with people. And it was interesting to to hear some of the questions that, you know, regional directors and other staff had um, about how to do it. And, you know, how can we do it if there's not a room? Um, I was talking to um, 
a New England volunteer who goes out to Israel every year to rep, and he was saying, which I thought was really interesting, that they couldn't do it in Israel because all of the like space inside of the schools that they do it at were completely filled up because most most of like the athletic stuff in Israel is done outside. Like they have so much outdoor space that they just didn't have a room for it. So we got into this really interesting conversation of like, what are some of the alternative spaces? Like I know in the California events, which is totally foreign to me and I'm sure Sarah, you'll experience this this coming season, but they do like, you know, there's a lot of outdoor venues. Like they're one of the San Diego regionals or something is like basically outside or like, you know, there's a roof over the, you know, venue, but there's, a ton of open space. So we talked about, um, kind of the idea of like alternative spaces. So what do you like, what are your thoughts on, you know, if, if an event doesn't necessarily have like a room or the room is like a disgusting locker room, which in new England, we, we like, (laughs) we bump into a lot. Um, like what, what do you see some of these spaces evolving into to help accommodate, you know, venues or places that may not have like a, a room per se? Yeah, that's a that's a really interesting question. Um, I know when we planned our FLL qualifier last year, we kind of ran into that issue where we wanted to put up a quiet room, but there just there wasn't space. So you you kind of have to be flexible with it. And one of the ideas we proposed is like, okay, well, what if we take a corner of an existing open room and then you know throw up some banner stands, put some sheets on it, and kind of corner it off so it's still like a, a space where you can relax and have some quiet and you're you're secluded a bit from the event um but i it it does get tricky you kind of have to i think take it personally in my opinion take it as it comes and and look at your space and what options you have so we ended up splitting our volunteer room with the quiet room at the fll qualifier and then when the interviews were done we were able to move it to one of the interview rooms but um i think it's important to try do a best effort to get a quiet room at an event just like as we've talked about they're so valuable um to have and i think it's it's so important you know at the fll level too you know those are really small kids and they're Mm -hmm. under a lot of pressure they only get one chance to compete on like an frc where you can kind of go to multiple districts or regionals so Mm -hmm. uh, i think you gotta you gotta make it work with what you have yeah i remember at the, the event we hosted a team that i mentor was there and this one real sweetheart, um, at, after that team lost in, uh, what was it? I think it was the quarterfinals um, yeah. uh, during the playoffs. Like, the entire team was really let down. This is their first ever competition. Most of them were fifth graders. And he was crying a little bit. And so he went to our quiet room along with the rest of the team. And I saw him make a little frowny face out of the Play-Doh. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he he, he cheered up. He, he perked up and he, he changed back into... No, the, the lovable kid that we all knew, and it was really touching. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. So PJ the Ref did a conference at the Detroit Champs about um, mental health awareness, and he was just saying in the chat that a lot of the discussion that happened afterwards with the around 100 people that were there, which is really cool to hear, um, he said that a lot of people were talking about how to accommodate students with different mental health concerns, specifically ADD, ADHD, and autism spectrum. So I think that ties into exactly what you guys were just saying about FLL competitions. Like I get stressed out at those because there's so much going on and it's like, you have to be on schedule all the time. But you know, I work with elementary school age students, so there's definitely like a developmental need at that point for them to just kind of remove themselves. And um, Connor, from 166 was saying that when he was volunteering the event that he was at had a quiet room and like it was good for him to just go in and take a break um i think that we're getting more of a natural conversation around the topic and especially you know pj is saying that at champs he had over 100 people attend that conference like they specifically stopped what they were doing at champs didn't go and get dip and dots they went and like you know had a a good like you know, investment of time into talking about mental health in the first community. And, you know, when we talked about this um, at the Partners Conference, we were talking about, you know, the overall experience of a team, Um, which I think if you're running an event or if you're somebody that actually cares about, you know, the the program in general, it's you want to make sure that everybody's having a good experience. So I think the effort that you guys are putting into, you know, the quiet rooms and everything else that you're doing is, is really providing that for people that are often overlooked or don't feel necessarily like represented, I guess, in, in the first community, which is 
pretty, pretty cool. I think um, uh, the other thing is it's not just the participants in the program, right? It's the siblings, it's the volunteers. And we oftentimes are just talking about the students in the program, but there's also mentors that it's helping. And once you start realizing the broader impact, it's pretty cool as well. Yeah. So um, Rooster2655 said, I was so happy to see them in North Carolina this year. Huge thanks goes out to Boneyard Robotics2682 for leading the charge. I know they needed it a couple of times this year. So that's that's really cool to hear. Every North Carolina event had them this year from what I saw on kind of the statistics we put out um, on a fancy map that I think Tyler showed at some point. Maybe. <laughs> and I think Sarah brings up a good point. Like, it's it's not just the participants. It's, you know, the, the people that come along to see the event, um, especially the younger siblings and stuff, just, like, needing a, a quiet moment to just sit and completely unplug. Um, I oh, wanted to mention, <laughs> I know the quiet room, It, I mean, sometimes, like, I get stressed out and I feel like I want to talk to someone, but I can't necessarily do that or some, um, do that. Yeah. So it... I think maybe one thing that could be incorporated, obviously not now, but in the future, we could have someone that is there to like talk to you, someone that you can maybe outlet your emotions about, or someone that's kind of there to just listen, because I know that's a big, or that's mm -hmm. something that I feel like I need to do, but sometimes I can't. Yeah, mm -hmm. your mentors are really busy, or like, just yeah. like an impartial person can be really helpful, yeah. too, to just to get things off your chest. Like, I know I'm the same way, like, I really like to talk to somebody when I'm stressed out or feeling anxious, so, yeah, I think that's a, an interesting point, something to think about for the future, for sure. Yeah, definitely, and I think that um, some of the resources that were put out at, like, Champs and some of the other events that were, like, printable, things um, were helpful with that where you could just like write something down and you know or leave like a positive note for somebody as cheesy as it sounds sometimes that's like mm -hmm. something that you need to see after like a really crappy match or you know just like a really frustrating interaction or like I know at some point during an event I start like freaking out about oh my gosh I gotta go grocery shopping I gotta work tomorrow <laughs> like no like I have to go be a real adult <laughs> so it's it's always good to like, I know for me, like just making a list always kind of refocuses my brain and a lot of the resources that were provided from, you know, here for you and at the quiet rooms were, were little things like that, that get you to like, just, you know, get back in touch with reality. So it's really interesting you bring that up because in Sydney, we are the regional planning committee, which I'm on, we organize the quiet room. So the teams don't have to do anything. It's already there. It's provided. But one of the teams, I think, saw the Here For You stuff, and they actually put post-it notes in all the female bathrooms. And so the mirrors were covered with all of these positive notes. And it was a really great way to, I mean, everyone has to go to the bathroom at some point during the day. And when you were there, you just were reading these really great notes, and it was really uplifting. So I think for those spaces that, or for those events that don't necessarily have a space, like, it sounds crazy, but you have a bathroom and, you know, it's a space that it, you can use. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I know in um, Greenville, Texas, um, Jamie Luce, who's the FRC team advocate, went down to that event and she had said that, you know, despite how gigantic that high school is, um, they didn't have um, a classroom that was close enough to where the venue, like the competition space was. So they used the entire cafeteria as like the quiet space. Um, while lunch wasn't going on and then it converted into like teams eating lunch and then it went back to the quiet space. So it was interesting that that was like their, you know, just go to kind of way of, of having that space. So, and it was, I guess it was like really big and open, but still everybody was, you know, really respectful of, okay, this is a place where I'm not going to sit here and talk, you know, I'm not going to like FaceTime with my friends and mm -hmm. all that weird stuff. So, um, Yeah. Um, I think Tyler brought it up before, but it was cool to see that FIRST was more than willing to have, like, the Compass Alliance go and actually produce, like, a how-to guide on how to do this. Because I know, as somebody that plans an event, and I'm sure Sarah can attest to this, too, it's like, if, if even if you want to do it, it's like, oh, God, one more thing I got to, like, plan and make sure it's, like, staffed and blah, blah, blah. So, Sarah, what do you think... Um, like, how do you think the planning guide went this season as far as, like, making it kind of plug and play for, for like, a regional planning committee or a district planning committee? Yes, this was our second year having them in Australia. So for us, it was pretty plug and play as it was, which made it a lot easier. You know, we um, 
I don't know how other regionals and districts do it because we're a bit odd being in Australia. We do everything a little differently because things are just a little different. So we use the totes uh, from Recycle Rush and that every room has totes that get sent to it. And so there's just two totes that are for the quiet room and they're just set to go. And, you know, the printouts just make it so easy. And you add, we have um, colored pencils that go up there and some sharpeners and it just, it goes up and we put it out and we have a volunteer up there and done. It makes it, it's really, really straightforward. You know, you just print out the things and basically you're good to go. Get some colored pencils or markers. I know one of the things that we did at Championship that made it a lot easier there was we actually asked teams to bring stuff in and we almost had too much stuff. So if you don't have the resources or the yeah. finances to do it, just ask teams. They're, you know, who doesn't have coloring books left over from when they were little or colored pencils mm -hmm. or markers or crayons? And very quickly you end up with more stuff than you need. So, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, you can and, get um, creative with it. <laughs> absolutely, and I know Jamie had to. She like packed up all the Detroit quiet room stuff after bringing a ton of it from Houston to Detroit, and then a ton of teams, especially Mechanical Advantage, brought a ton of stuff to fill the we rooms might with. We were That's excited. A bit. Yeah. <laughs> a good thing to be excited about but she said that there is so much stuff left over that will be brought to events this coming season which is pretty cool um so yeah um we're gonna wrap up this topic though i think we got through most of the comments in chat it was a really good discussion going on in chat right now and i guess pj is gonna try to post his slides from his conference at some point because apparently only some of the championship conferences get recorded mine never does so <laughs> And I'm sad PJs didn't. <laughs> but hopefully we can get PJ to recreate that at some point and get it online because I personally would love to see it. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.